Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do another eight and a half by 11 page using the sketchbook from the creative design team. And I'm going to be working on my February 2023 photos. Now usually over the course of an entire month, I have photos from different days, but this double page spread for February is going to be all about the Monet and Friends exhibition I went to at the Loom with my daughter. And I've got a lot of photos that I want to fit on two eight and a half by 11 page spreads. You can see from here, I've gone ahead and I've put a lot of these into flip flaps and I've got this really cool idea to hopefully get a concertina look on this. Now the sketch that I have picked out for this is on page 26 of the sketchbook. And I thought that the Dream Maker collection would work really, really well with my photos. You can see here, I've got pinks and blues, lagoon colors and the coordinates Coordinating cardstock for Dream Maker has this gorgeous watercolor sort of wash type look through it. And I think it really suits the Monet paintings that I've taken photos of. So I've got things laid out in front of me here and I've already put together some of the strips on this side because I wanted to see how my photos were going to look with this. And I think this is going to work quite well with these photos. But because I've got so many photos, you can see in the sketch here, there's really only one five by seven on this page and then there's a four by six and two four by fours. So the four by fours are all going to have flip flaps and the five by seven is going to have flip flaps as well. And that way I can increase the real estate of these two eight and a half by 11 pages. So I'm just going to put this one aside for the moment and flip my versamat over and show you how I've lined these up. I'm just gonna put this down on my Versamat at the bottom. I love working with a Versamat. It really, really does help to get everything lined up perfectly. So what I decided to do was start at the one inch and then go across to the three inch section. And this is the one that my photo is going to tuck into. So I need to make sure that when I put the adhesive on, I leave this bit free of adhesive here. So for this one, I'm going to put the adhesive directly onto my strip and I'm purposely going to leave a gap for my photo to tuck into. So I'll just make sure that this is all nice and lined up. And I want to also make sure that the edge that is going to be seen the most, which is this section up here, where the most differentiation in texture is, is going to be the one that will show. So I'm just gonna go from three inches here and finish this off down at one inch. And then I'm gonna be able to tuck my photo under here. Now for the rest of the layers, I can just go straight onto the page with my adhesive and put those on. So I'm just looking at where my photo is going to be roughly and thinking what part of the paper do I want to be seeing the most. And because this is going to be behind, I really want to make sure that this gorgeous pattern here is shown. So this one I'm going to put up on this section and then I'm going to run my adhesive along. Oops, I went a little bit over top. So I'm just going to push that back. And then I'm going to bring in my next one. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to hold my photo over it and have a little look at what part of the pattern I want to see the most. And I think there's more texture going on down in this section. So I'm going to adhere this one on an angle like that. And then I can trim these back pieces off. I'm just going to use my scissors. I could use my 12 inch trimmer, but it's just as easy to flip it over and use the edge of my base page to cut everything off nice and straight. So I've got this piece done. I'm going to make sure that I can tuck my photo in here. And I'm quite loving how this is looking. And this is the five by seven flip flap that I'm going to use. So you can see with this, I've adhered my photos onto a five by seven piece of cardstock, a white daisy. And these ones are running in this direction so that when I flip up, these ones here will be in the right direction as well. 
and I thought it would be appropriate to have Monet's garden and the haystacks being the main focal feature of this page and then I'll be able to flip up and see the rest of the photos here. This really is quite a wonderful exhibition to go and see. We went and saw Van Gogh the year before and there's a new one coming out soon too so I think I'm a bit hooked. I think I have to go and see all of them. Now for the stamping for this, I'm just going to turn this over. I'm not going to adhere my photo as yet because I do want to bring in some stamping and I'm going to be using the Dream Maker stamp set. So you can see that's got a floral, some text. I've picked out this text here that I'm going to stamp on and also these words as well. I don't think I'm going to use the words for this. And I think because I've got so many photos and it is going to be quite busy that I'm going to keep my stamping fairly minimal. So I'm going to bring in my Glacier ink. I've decided just to use Glacier in black and I'm going to stamp this over top of some of these areas and around the corners as well. So I'll just bring in some scratch paper, move everything over just a little bit. And this is the one I've decided that I want to use and I'm going to go off the edge of my strips as well and I'm going to have some of this coming out from the edges of my photo. And I will overlap it a little bit as well. I don't want to overwhelm my photos. This side only has the one photo on it, but I really do want to make sure that my photos are the highlight. I don't want to make this too busy, which is one of the reasons why I decided to choose this sketch here, because I knew that I would have enough room to make the photos be a highlight without building up too much in the background. So I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to adhere my photo down and then I'm just going to slip a little bit more adhesive underneath here just to hold this piece in place. I know it doesn't look like that much at the moment, but I'll know that I'll be able to bring in more once I've put the rest of my photos on. I just want to make sure that I have everything looking how I want it to look before I add too much to it. I've got a six by four and four by four that will go next to each other pretty much. And then this one here at the bottom as well. This is the one that's going on top. The one that's actually going on the page is this one. What you could do is sit down and draw step by step the bridge and everything. And my daughter sat and I sat down and did that. So I'm gonna tuck this one quite a way up under here because there's a lot of yellow in here and I really didn't get close enough. It was hard to get side by side photos of this. So I'm just gonna stick this one down first and then I can decide how much more I want to add with the stamping. Before I press that down too much, I'm going to have some of these words come off to the side here. That just helps it make it look like it's gonna belong. I'm gonna move this out a little bit so I can stamp one here and then I'm going to adhere this down because I can always mask off if I want to put any more stamping on there. I need to get the base photo for this one and that's going to tuck under this section here. So where I did this stamping before is gonna get lost once I put that photo on. So I'm just gonna have some coming out of the edge. And I'm not worrying if I go over the top at all with the stamping. I want it to look a little bit sketchy. And I do have to remember that I've got to leave enough of an edge for the flip flap here. And then this photo here gets tucked under this section. So what I might do is put a little bit of stamping up this left edge. and adhere this photo down. So I quite like how this is coming together with the layers and the tucking of the photos into these strips. So now I just want to put a few more of these words up in this corner. There it is, I thought I'd lost my stamp there for a minute. I'm just gonna lift my photo up a little bit so I can have some coming out from the edge of here as well. Just to give it all a little bit of grounding. And this is looking a little bit naked here. It looks like it needs a little bit more 
of this stamping going on. So I'm just going to mask this off and put that here. And the same here. I'm going to mask this off and come in over this side. And maybe one in the middle too. So I just need another piece of copy paper to mask off my photo. And I'm going to call that done for now. With the flip flaps this time, instead of tucking them behind the page protector and onto the page itself, I'm going to be putting them on top. But what I want to do now is stamp my title, which is going to go on the left page. If you've been watching any of my 8.5 by 11 2023 projects, I've done two layouts previously and I will link those below. I have been using the Havana alphabet to do my title. So I think I'll stay true to the sketch and get a piece of white daisy out and stamp my title across. So I'm going to stamp it on here. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing, but what I wanted to point out, when I'm doing a title, I quite often have a bigger piece and then I'll be able to trim it down. And because this set has quite a free flowing look to it, it's all right if it's not exactly perfect all the way through. But I do love how this stamps. I've got my title all stamped and I've mounted it onto a piece of the Glacier Dream Maker coordinating cardstock. I was going to leave this fairly plain, but I can't help myself. I think I need to bring in some of these floral elements. So I think what I'm going to do with this is some more tone stamping. So I'm going to use Glacier Ink again and just have these coming out from where these script elements are. I am going to bring in this other piece of scratch paper so that I can mask certain areas off because I've already stuck my photos down. But I just think having these floral elements is going to work really, really well. And I'm really happy with how this is looking. I'm not going to make sure that they're all complete. I'm going to have some coming off the edges of the page and also out from the sides of the photos as well. I don't want to make them all too uniform and I'm quite liking how this is looking. It's actually bringing the page to life a little bit more. Down here, I think I might do a double and then it can cross over. I know my title is going across some of this, so some of it won't be seen, but it just gives everything a place to land. I'm gonna put another one out here. And because I've put that floral element there, I'm also going to put more of that script writing. And I think this is making the page come to life just a little bit more. After all, it was a Monet and Friends exhibition. So I think the flowers and the floral elements will really make this work. I know I've gone through and shown a lot of Dream Maker stamping and layering and doing all that sort of thing, but I think it's working for my February pages. So I'm quite happy with how this is working out. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the right page. I'm just going to stop for the moment and have a look at what I've got going on here. I quite love how this is looking, so I might just just leave this as is. Well, no, I'm not going to. I might just bring in a little bit more of the text up in this area here. I just want to make sure that the floral elements and the words all have the same sort of combination of the layers of the script and the floral elements. I'm just popping my title up on foam tape and I'm going to put that at the left edge just like it was in the sketch. It doesn't quite come out as far. Everything in the sketches have all got measurements but for this title rather than following the measurement for the sketch I've cut it to fit my actual title here. And now I'm going to put these in the page protectors so I can attach my flip flaps. I'm using one of the grey Everyday Life albums. So this I've got my photos in for January. So I just need to take out the next two pages. Usually when I'm doing a project like this, I do make sure that I put all the page protectors in there so they're ready to go. Now, normally what I do in a lot of my albums is actually cut the page protector to put the flip flaps on, but I've got quite a few to add to this one and it's going to be a little bit fiddly. So I think what I'm gonna do for this is put the flip flaps on the top of the page protectors. So I just need to put this one in. 
going to flip my verse mat over so I've got a hard surface to work on. And by putting these on now, it's just going to give me an idea as to whether or not I need to add anything else to this. With the flip flaps, you always want to make sure that when you put your photos in, you have them going in the right orientation so that when they flip up, people can see the photo the right way. Now, these have a little protective backing here and they are quite sticky. So once they're on, that's it, they're not coming off. I'm going to turn this upside down so it's a little bit closer to me so that I can line my photo directly up over the top of this and then put my flip flap down. And then I can just give it a bit of a burnish. You can actually run over it with your fingernail if that's easier for you as well. So and that's my first one put on. I'm going to attach the other ones. So this one here is quite a cool scene that they set up. You could stand on a little bridge that they had made and there was a big picture frame around it, but I found the heavy picture frame to be quite intrusive to my photo, so I didn't actually want that on there. So I've cropped that out. So now I'm going to put this one on and burnish that in. And you can really see that you don't get a lot of interference with this plastic area over the top of the flip flap and they work so well. Now this is the one that I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to adhere this flip flap down. So this one has to be folded up and then this one's going to go over top here. Actually, what I think I'm going to do so that this doesn't interfere at all is move this photo down a little bit if I can. I'm just going to pull this out. Sometimes you just have to fiddle around with things until you get it exactly how you want it to look. So I'm going to put this one right down to the edge of the paper here. And I'm thinking that's going to solve my little problem of the flip flaps going over the top of each other. Put this back in. I'm going to just trial it with the one that I haven't peeled anything off. So I think that's going to work just fine now. So this one will come out this way. You can hear just by them grabbing by this grabbing onto my fingers just how sticky this is. And I hope my head's not getting in the way here. So that's my first one down. And then this one is going to concertina out. So my next one, I've already adhered, I wanted to have a little test. I've already adhered this flip flap onto this one. Just gonna burnish that in. And then instead of having all the flip flaps coming out this way, I want it to pull out. So it is effectively like a concertina. So this is to the right edge, this one's going to be to the left edge. So with the way the sticky is on this one, it's actually going to tuck around behind this area here. So I need to fold that out and then I'm going to adhere this directly onto this piece here. I need to tear this bit off. I'm tucking this photo in. I'm lining up my photos and that's going to go over top and adhere down. So I'm giving that a good burnish. So now that I've got all my flip flaps on, this one will go out and this one will concertina around. I just need to move my pages along a bit so that you can see. So when you pull this one out, you can see all the photos running along this way and then they concertina back in. And then I'm gonna have all the photos coming out that way to see from this area. For my journaling on this double page spread, I'm going to use a clear shipping label and type it up and put it in this area up here. I do have a little bit to say about this and I know that if I hand write it, it's going to get lost in amongst the stamping that I've done. But with the shipping label, because I can print that and it's a clear one, I can put that over the top of this and that will be able to be read quite easily because it's a typed piece. So I really quite love how this has turned out. I'm really pleased. I had this idea to do this. I've not done this before with the flip flap and I think it works really, really well. The photos are still protected. I have done this sort of thing just on cardstock before with my 2022 album that I did last year, but I do love how the flip flaps all work.
work together and create a lot of visual space for all my photos without overwhelming my eight and a half by 11 page. And I think all that's left for me to do for this layout is to put some clear sparkles onto the page. I don't wanna introduce any more color to this. I quite like the subtle tones with the touch of pink here with the ballerina and it just brings everything together quite nicely without overwhelming the page with these quite busy photos. So I'm going to adhere all of these and I'll put some still shots up at the end of the video as well as links below to everything that I've used that is currently available. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy crafting and bye for now.